To earn some money with friends and family. M. Laja! Refer and earn! Yes! It pays to share. Refer friends and family members. Receive 50 points each and redeem it for Laja Shesh. Haven't you referred a friend yet? M. Laja! Terms and conditions apply. You want to earn some money with friends and family. You want to earn some money with friends and family
apologies. Uh, can you? Oh, yes. Uh, thanks much, uh, John Christian. I think somebody said that uh, we didn't have any audio. I think I can see some input now. So thank you very much for that observation. As I was saying that uh, we'll be discussing uh, today about the role of the credit committee. We'll be discussing about the role of the credit committee. Last week, we talked in generic about the role of the different committees. So today's discussion is going to be focused on the credit committee. If you want to join the credit committee, you want to become part of, of the governance of the credit union, you want to understand what will be your roles and responsibilities as a member of that committee, uh, you want to remain here for the next few minutes. So we're going to be focusing on that. Additionally, I mentioned earlier, with uh, apologies for the no audio, uh, we'll be mentioning in subsequent broadcasts about our collaboration with the Cooperative Division uh, to celebrate in July Cooperative Week. So that week will be used to highlight uh, some of the contributions of the financial cooperatives and the non-financial cooperatives in nation building. All right. So you want to watch that space. You want to stay tuned and know how is it that we're going to be uh, rolling out those events for Cooperative Week. So our focus today is on the credit committee, the roles and responsibilities of the credit committee. Uh, last week, we, we talked about the sections of the Act under Section 60 that speaks to what the credit union, the credit committee's primary responsibilities are. And it says here under Section 60A, you're responsible for the in, uh, implementation of the approved loan policy. And it is the board of directors that uh, approves the loan policy of the of the credit of the credit union uh, b you are to provide prudent oversight of the loan portfolio c you're to make recommendations to the board of directors in respect of the loan policy of the credit union uh, so for example if you're going to uh, you review the policy and you realize that there are some gaps that the credit union need to focus on then you can make those recommendations in your monthly reporting to the board of directors and you can say listen we've reviewed the loan policy these are some of the recommendations for amendments that we um, put in forward. And then D, perform any such duties that may be prescribed under the Act, the regulations, and the bylaws of the credit union. All right. So this this is really in synthesis. But we're going to get a little bit uh, deeper into the roles and responsibility of the credit committee. Now, the credit committee normally provide an assessment of the loan portfolio based on what we call the five Cs of credit so they look at the character you look at the capacity you look at the collateral you look at the capital and conditions so on the character side we determine the credit worthiness of the borrower on the capacity side it looks at the member's ability to pay or to repay on the collateral side we look at what assets of the membership is being used to secure the loan on the capital side, we look at the, the, the members, what we call stake in the game. So the borrower's personal investment in the project. We want everybody to have a foot in the game. And so we look at the members' capital. And then we look at the conditions. This includes factors like the purpose for the loan and the interest rates and so forth. So you look at the five C's of credit and you make an assessment as to the members' ability to repay. Uh, that is the capacity, the character of the member, the collateral that is being used, the capital of the member, the stake in the game, and the conditions. All right, so we can get a little bit uh, later uh, on the five C's. Uh, so we talked about the under the act, what is the responsibility? Now let's look at the loan approval process. So under 611, section 611, it says the board shall determine the terms and conditions under which the credit committee shall approve loans to members. So it is the board that determines based on the loan policy how these loans are going to be granted now you have some cases whereby some loan policies of the credit union have what we call tranches so for example you have uh, management is responsible for loans under fifty thousand. then you have credit committee that would give loans between approved loans between fifty thousand and two hundred and fifty thousand and then you have what we call a special committee which is normally comprised of a member of the board a member of the credit committee and a member of the supervisory committee and that special committee would look at loans let's say from 250 to 500,000 and then you have the board that will approve loans in excess of 500,000 this is how typically the loan policies are but they may vary 
from organization to organization, but the credit committee will need to be mindful of what those, uh, what are the stipulations under that, um, uh, under that, um, the loan policy. But bear in mind, notwithstanding these tranches, all of these loans approved or disapproved must see the attention of the credit committee. So the credit committee still has to sign off on all of these loans or make recommendations for approval depending on the size of the loan based on the loan policy. But remember, it is the board of directors that would set the loan policy of the organization and it is the credit committee to give out loans or underwrite loans based on the approved loan policy and also the bylaws of the society and and the act so yes under 61 one of the act it says the board shall set the terms and conditions under which the the credit committee shall approve loans under 61 two it says the credit committee may upon such terms and conditions the board may specify authorize the manager loans manager or other employees of the credit union to approve loans to members so the, though it has to go before the credit committee, the credit committee can have management deal with certain aspects of loans. So, for example, cash secured loans, loans under 50000 based on the loan policy may see the approval of management and then it would be reviewed uh, by the credit committee. It says under 61.3, a person authorized by the board to approve such loans under section uh, subsection one and two shall submit a written report so the credit committee is now responsible for meeting at least once a month and submitting that written report to the board of directors on all loans uh review all right and then fourthly the responsibility and duties of any person authorized to approve loans under the section are concurrent with the responsibilities and duties of the credit committee so once you fall under the credit committee all of these uh, the mandates that would fall under your uh, purview. Now, what are the reporting requirements? Let's look a little bit about the reporting requirements for the credit committee. So yes, you're mandated by law to meet once a month at least, and you have to report to the board and the membership. So what exactly are you re required to report uh, to the board and the membership? Well, on the 62-1, it says you have to meet at least once a month, you must keep minutes of your meeting. You must submit a monthly report to the board. And the monthly report to the board will contain information such as the number and the categories loan, whether it's agriculture loan, car loan, education loan, mortgages, etc. Uh, two, the number and category of loans granted. Uh, so loans application and loans granted. So you may have some of those loans that you may have denied. And one of the things we've always encouraged credit committees when you're working with the membership to get a loan, for example, I'll, a, member, a member might come to you and say, listen, I need a vehicle for my business. And they might say, listen, I need a Lamborghini or I need a, a Benz. But the, based on the five C's of credit, the member in your assessment may only be able to afford a Nissan Corolla or something. All right, a Toyota Corolla or a Nissan. So, but it is your responsibility to also advise uh, the member based on the what is required it is not just we can't give it a loan but these are the reasons why we can't give it a loan and as part of how we advise the membership we said well listen but based on your situation now you cannot get the bends now but you'll be able to afford something within the range of a corolla and so the membership can now make a decision as to okay i cannot afford what i want so i can get this in the meantime and then when things improve then I can get that which I desired. So you present that. And then thirdly, under 62C3, the security taken and the risk of loans granted. So you also assess the collateralization of the loan. What asset is being brought by the membership? Is it a certificate of title? Is it um, uh, the, 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 the land title? What asset is, is it cash secured loan? These are some of the things you look at. You also look at, for example, report on the applications denied so if you have uh, what are the delinquent loans classification of loans loans written off you know that the credit union are now um regimented by the ifrs uh, 9 and is 39 so you look at the loans written off watch list accounts um, that have been submitted for application for you 
uh, large credit exposure and related party loans. Now, one of the things that we've seen in a lot of the credit committees is that the the credit committee would uh, the uh, special committee, which again in most cases comprises of members of the credit committee, supervisory, and board, they would look at loans for staff and volunteers. So any loan for staff and volunteer would it would pass through the ranks, but it would be approved by the special committee once the credit committee recommends it for approval. All right. So that is because these persons are employed by the credit union and they also sit on the governance of the credit union. So this is really to help in the transparency and accountability. You don't want somebody to say, oh, because she sits on the credit committee, she's approving a loan for herself or approving a loan for her body. So this is part of the transparency and the reporting requirement and the governance mechanism within the credit union that allows for loans of volunteers and staff to see the special committee. And, um, and then finally, you also want to submit an annual report. So for example, at the annual general meeting, you would find the credit committee members will submit a report to the membership uh, on the performance of the credit portfolio uh, under their, their, their purview. And so they will talk about trends, they talk about loans granted, loans refused, the type of trends, the type of loan, sorry, and, and any additional factor that they believe might be of interest to the membership. So this is essentially, I, I, and I don't want you to, to feel like it is, it is the end of the world, like there's so much to be done. When you get on the credit committee, you're normally trained by the credit union, the training provided by the league, training provided by the credit unions as well. But you're expected to have some basic knowledge. And so if you're that person and you're interested in joining the uh, the credit committee, um, these are what the what we call prerequisites that you, you're expected to have or, or, or would be best if you have. So one, you must by law be a member of the credit union. So you cannot serve on the credit union without being a member. And there's a section 53.4, which highlights a whole list of, re of requirements for you to serve on the governance of a credit union, which you must satisfy. So not only you must be a member of the credit union, you must, for example, be in good standing. You must um, at least have done business with the credit union for at least the last 12 months. So you cannot just wash your foot and come. You need to have been doing business with the credit union, need to be a member in good standing. Um, to be able to serve on a, on a couple of other criteria. Um, so if you have experience in granting consumer type loans, that would also be an asset. Um, if you, uh, you must be capable of evaluating a borrower's financial condition and the ability to repay. So the information is going to be presented to you by the loans officer, and you will now sit down with the rest of the committee and make an assessment as to the borrower's financial condition. Can they pay? What is your recommendations and so forth? Um, you must also be able to understand the value of the collateral. And we've had instances where uh, in assessment, people would present a land as a collateral and they would say it's gentle sloping. Uh, I mean, everything in Dominica is gently sloping. And then when you, when you go and you do the inspection, you realize that the, that it is all but gentle sloping. It's like a 45 degree. Uh, so you must be able to assess the collateral value of the, uh, the of the collateral that's been presented uh, for that loan. Uh, you must also be an established member of the community that the credit union serves, so you know the membership. And it would also help if you have knowledge of the applicable credit union laws, bylaws, collection, and uh, credit collection policies and procedure. Uh, if you don't know it, you will be that will form part of your orientation once you are uh, elected or appointed. And then finally, you must have time to serve. And this is one of the things we make a distinction between the able and the capable because we have quite a few persons that are that can do the job, that can but they just cannot commit their time. And, and this is really a disservice to the credit union. So we want to ensure that if you want to be on the credit committee of whether it is NCCU, Central, West Coast, Marigot, Granby, or St. Mary's Credit Union, you must demonstrate that you have the opportunity to be at the meetings. And it's not only about being at the meetings, my friend. It is also about being able to read up the information beforehand that is provided to you and to adequately prepare for those meetings so that you can make meaningful contributions. 
All right. So again, if you're interested in serving at your local credit union in the credit committee, contact your local credit union. I think most of them would have already made the advertising uh, advertisement for volunteers to serve because we're going to be having annual general meeting starting in June, probably June, July. So you want to contact your local credit union and say, listen, I want to serve on this credit union. Now, um, the what we'd expect you to do is not just to say you want to serve and put up your name and that's it. Send in a copy of your CV to your credit union and send up a short little write-up, probably a paragraph or two of yourself. All right. So this is this is what I can do, and this is my CV. All right. So don't just send up your name and two persons to say, yeah, I support them. Send in your CV so that the, the nominating committee can do a proper assessment and say, okay, yes, he or she is uh, fit to serve because we must do the due diligence on the membership. Okay. All right, folks, I am out of time. It has been a pleasure uh, talking to you today. We focused on the credit committee, the role of the credit committee. Uh, next week, we'll be focusing on the role of the supervisory and compliance committee on the for cooperatives so i want you to join me again uh for that thank you for those who who subscribe so thank you to those who uh, sent in the comments and appreciation for the program uh thank you very much for all of you who continue to support the credit union in dominica helping us to be strong and and more relevant until that time folks good morning good afternoon depending on where you're listening from thank you for joining the broadcast Dominica World, good morning. You want to send your money to friends and family? No more standing in line. M. Lashon. It's a new digital financial service brought to you by the Dominica Credit Union Movement. Introduces a new wallet solution, M. Lashon. Chop up friends, pay bills, make shopping easy, extra secure. Sign up is absolutely free. M. Lashon. You want to send your money? Friends and family, no more standing in line. No more standing M. Download the M. Larja app today. See your credit union for more details. M. Larja, your mobile payment solution. M. Larja. Talk about topping up via CU Online. Open your CU Online account and select Transfer. Select Send to any other member and enter the last name M. Lancha. M. L. A. Let's talk about topping up via CU Online. Open your CU Online account and select Transfer. Send to any other member and enter the last name M. Lancha, M. L. A. J. A. N. Account number 321027, ID 10. Enter your desired amount and leave your M. Lancha associated phone number within the comments. Confirm the transfer. Confirm your email address for the security code and input the code received, then click Submit. It's that simple. Mlasha, a new way to pay. Mlasha, send me money. Send me money. Receive money. Receive money. Send me money. No more hassle. Mlasha, send me money. Send me money. Receive money. M. Lasha, it's safe and secure. M. Lasha, you want to send your money to friends and family? No more standing in line. M. Lasha, 
Sasha. It's a new digital financial service brought to you by the Dominica Credit Union Movement. Introduces a new wallet solution, M. Larsha. Chop up friends, pay bills, make shopping easy, extra secure. Sign up is absolutely free. M. Larsha. You want to send your money to friends and family. No more sending in line. M. Larsha. Download the M. Larsha app today. See your credit union for more details. M. Larsha, your mobile payment.